everyone! So nice to be back. Um, it's been a while since I've done a video in um, in my sewing room, so I'm excited to be back. Today I'm going to talk about my uh, latest project, which is for Lamazi Fabrics. And um, she is amazing, and I love, love the store um, so much that I have bought so much from them. Um, I really like her selection of fabrics because she has a very well curated selection. I don't have to scroll through like hundreds of fabrics. Um, I can just pop onto the page and see the latest new fabrics and find something I instantly like. Um, so I really enjoy that because it's a lot less work um, when I just want to be inspired by something. And the fabrics are usually all super high quality. So I was scrolling through and she asked me to be part of her blogger network, which I was honored to be a part of. And when I saw this fabric, I freaked out. So... It's kind of like got a gray base and there is actual embroidery on the fabric and it's so beautiful and it um, handles very well in the wash. Like I put it on hand wash um, and then just let it hang dry or lay flat to dry and it did really well with that. So I can't really wear anything that I have to, you know, dry clean and so um, I was really happy about that. Whenever I thought about what I wanted to make, I went through a lot of options in my head. I didn't really want a top that was, or well, I didn't want a garment that was too over the top because I feel like the fabric kind of speaks for itself and is so beautiful. Like I didn't want, I wanted to kind of highlight it. I didn't want it to be everywhere. I didn't want to make a dress out of it. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I want to be like super bold and make a huge dress out of um, a fabric like this. But for, for this one, for some reason, I just really wanted to highlight the embroidery and just do something um, smaller. So I decided on a top. And when I was thinking about a top pattern, I thought to myself that it needed to match kind of the uniqueness of the fabric, but not overpower it and make it to where you can't, you don't really notice how beautiful the fabric is. So I kind of wanted something in the middle. So I ended up deciding on the named clothing Selena top um, slash dress, but I made the top from their Breaking the Pattern book. It's always been one of my favorite dresses I've ever made. That one and the Deer and Doe Magnolia dress. Those have been my two favorite dresses that I've ever made. Oh no, no. I also like Vogue 9253. <laughs> I just love dresses, okay? But I promise this is one of my favorites. So I made a leopard one and I actually have a YouTube video that I'll link here um, on, uh, let's see, probably about seven or eight months ago um, and I made the dress. But for this, I wanted to make it the top and I wanted to change it up. about um, the modifications I made. So the top, um, basically I made it exactly the same. The only thing I changed was that the top, I think in the book they assume the top is gonna be sleeveless. And so I wanted it to have sleeves because we're heading into fall. And so I decided to include the sleeves, but I am basically for the past year, I've been obsessed with puffy sleeves I think it started with 
the Adrian blouse, <laughs> my Friday, Friday pattern company, and then it just blew up from there. I mean, I've always liked it, but I never actually made any until the Adrian blouse, and then I just put puffy sleeves on everything. So I basically took the sleeve pattern piece and I decided to create a bishop sleeve because I wanted to have my puffy sleeves. So I traced out the seam allowance at the cap sleeve cap um, because I don't want to bother the seam allowance because that's my stitching line and I don't want my stitching line to change too much because I wasn't trying to change the gathering at the sleeve cap. Although that would have been really cool and I'm actually considering doing that um, maybe next time I make the, a top like this. But I left it alone for now because I didn't want to go like super over the top. Like I said, I wanted it to kind of, I kind of wanted the fabric to stand out. I just wanted to poof it a little bit. Um, so I cut um, and I will uh, display a picture of what the pattern piece looked once I spread it out. But I basically cut three lines, um, one that goes up the center and then I measured from the center to the edge and put a line in the middle of that and then a li another line in the middle of that. I took all those um, slits, so there should be three areas that you can expand when you do that, and I expanded them each two inches. So it basically expands the bottom part of the sleeve but leaves the cap alone. And that's, I think that's what a bishop sleeve is as far as I know. Um, and so that, creates a wider bottom so um this was great but i worried a little bit about how the um sleeve was going to look when i used the ties <clears throat> so i still wanted to include the ties but the ties go they just go around the sleeve bottom here and they kind of gather it around your arm and then tie and it leaves kind of a little you know extra over here normally that extra part is not very much because the sleeve is not expanded like we did but since it was going to be a lot i didn't want it to be awkwardly gathered with the ties or pinched or you know look just strange so I decided to um, use bias tape on the inside which is something I've learned from some of the big four, big four patterns when you want to gather a, a sleeve um, what I did was I stopped about five eighths of an inch or half an inch away from the seam from the underarm seam and I started sewing bias tape all the way around, just edge stitching it on each side so it creates like a tunnel and it's one inch bias tape. And then I put three eighths inch elastic inside this tunnel and I measured the elastic around my arm um, so I knew how long it needed to be. And then once I um, Put it through the tunnel and it, it's gathered appropriately it was the proper length that i wanted it to be i stitched down the edges and basically closed off the tunnel and um then i cut off the very edge of the elastic because i had some sticking out so that it wouldn't get sucked back in so i had a little bit extra sticking out and then i closed off the end and so now it's there's a nice tunnel of elastic and it gathers the sleeve nicely so that it's pretty much like pre-gathered in an even way and then when i use the ties um, it just kind of like really ties it around my arm. Now I forgot to mention in the very beginning a very, very important modification that I made um, to the sleeve was also to shorten it. So I didn't want it to be a full long sleeve for some reason. I just decided I wanted it to be a little bit shorter, maybe like three quarter length. Um, so I uh, basically just took off like four inches like this is literally what I did I looked at my arm <laughs> super scientific and I was like yeah, I just want it to be like right here and then I decided like how because I knew how long the other one was and I just decided how long that was and or I measured it 
and I chopped it off the end of the sleeve and then I moved all of the notches before I chopped it off I moved all the notches up four inches because that's how much I was taking off and then I flared out the edges a little bit because there's a little bit of a flare on the pattern piece to account for the hem so I, I think it's uh, they accounted like an inch for the hem so I I flared it out at that point and I had it come in a little bit and flare out so I did that first and then um, and then I cut the three slits expanded the sleeve kind of um, evened out the bottom which I show um, on the blog post and then I had a new sleeve pattern piece and then I cut it out and went from there um, so those are the modifications to the sleeve um, something very important I should note for your pattern pieces um, for your layout you will not be using if you're gonna add sleeves you will not be using the front and back facing brainlessly I just laid all the pattern pieces out I um, put the facings down cut them out and then I was like wait a minute I don't need that because <laughs> I'm adding the sleeves so I think that's just for the sleeveless version um, because you don't need a facing for um, your top if you're gonna have the collar and then I also had the sleeves so I, I'm not sure exactly when you would need the facings because I've never made a sleeveless version or I've never made the collarless version it might just be for the collarless because you need something to finish the neckline but um, yeah so don't cut those out <laughs> if you're going to do the collar and the sleeves don't cut those out um, and then I um, also I forgot to mention something very obvious the pattern piece is the front and back this is the entire dress It's the length of the entire dress so there are lines to cut for the top and a cutoff line for if you're making the jumpsuit so I just used the regular top cutoff line um, and I'll talk about uh, that line later and how I wish it was longer. Um, and so the next thing about the construction that I want to point out, and I talk about this in my YouTube video when I make the dress, but I'll mention it again. Um, I when I attach when you attach the zipper, the instructions say to attach the very top part of the zipper, like the the plastic part, the stopper. Um, about three eight, three eighths of an inch, I believe, from the top. So whenever you are constructing this, and I have some pictures in um, my blog post, but when you're constructing this, this inner color piece is still open before you put the zipper in. So you have an outer color piece and an inner color piece, and so this is still folded up. So you have your bodice, your outer color and then your inner collar, which is still flipped up, okay? So you want the zipper to be three-eighths of an inch from the seam between the outer and inner collar. So let me explain that. If you put it three-eighths of an inch from the top of the inner collar, which is still folded up, just think about it being folded up. When you fold it down, you're gonna be folding the zipper down, which doesn't make any sense. So basically you're putting it you're putting it three eighths of an inch from the top but it's not the very top it's just the the top of the outer collar which is basically the seam between the outer and inner collar so just keep that in mind i know it sounds confusing but it'll make sense whenever you're putting it together also during an inch um, construction um, there are some instructions that tell you how to attach the inner collar to the zipper and to hand stitch it and things like that. What I did is I had some kind of sticking out left over on the side. So I folded the inner collar right sides together this way with like a, the seam allowance already folded under like it's going to be when you put it, um, when you sew it down. I had them right sides together folded backwards and I stitched right along the edge of the zipper and then I cut the corner and I flipped it out right side out and it ended up being like this like being a little bit of I mean being a nice sharp corner so that's how I did that but I also explained that in the blog so speaking of the zipper I'm gonna move on to fit 
So <laughs> the dress calls for like a 20 to 22 inch zipper. So I um, was like, well, is that even gonna read? Like, is that gonna be too long for my top? Maybe I'll just do one size down. So I looked at some other tops and I thought that a 12 to 14 inch zipper would be okay. But when I finished the top, it was very hard to get over. It was fine to get over my head, but to get over my chest, it was extremely difficult. Um, so I was like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Am I going to take this zipper out and sew in a longer zipper? Can I take the side seams out at all? Like, you know, I was fine with making the top bigger because you're still, you still got the ties in the front that can kind of cinch in your waist a little bit. So I was like, okay, where can I make the top bigger? So instead of, you know, sewing in a new zipper, which would have been just awful. <laughs> um, I decided to take out these little pleats where the um, ties are sewn in. So when you sew the ties in, you have marked on your front bodice a couple of spots, two spots on each side where you're supposed to have, where you're supposed to um, pinch the fabric and have those two lines meet. When you have them meet, is where you have them meet is basically where you're supposed to sew your tie. So this tie was sewn about, do you see where it is now? It was sewn about right here. Further, it's hard to explain this, but, but basically a bigger bite out of the inside of the fabric is bas basically what I had done and it's what I was supposed to do. Now I think I wasn't super accurate with my lines and I probably squeezed more than I should have, plus I didn't have a zipper that was long enough in my opinion. So the easiest way to make this fit over my chest, what I mean, I like took off my glasses, took off my hair clip, like you know how you have things sticking out and you can't get shirts on? I mean, I like did everything to get it on and I'm like, look, I am not gonna deal with a shirt that takes me like 10 minutes to get on. So I basically let out these pleats and only pinched, I still made the same fold. Like see how when you pinch the fabric together, you're making a fold on the inside. This is like the very um, center of the pleat that you're making, the center fold. I still used that center fold, but I basically sewed the tie, tie in like kind of, kind of right where that fold is. And so it pinched a lot less fabric. Now more, more fabric is open and I can easily fit it over my head. Now I feel like another part of the fit is um, the length and the length I feel like was too short, like way too short. I cut it the length it was supposed to be. I didn't feel like the bodice was too short in the dress, but the dress is kind of hard to tell because I mean it goes all the way down to your, you know, feet. So, um, so I didn't really expect that to be a problem. But that being said, it would be extremely easy to just make it longer on the on the pattern piece. And so you just don't cut it. I mean, you just won't cut it as as short. Um, it does start to flare out just a bit, but you can like keep it straight if you want to. And um, I don't think I would have wanted it too much longer, maybe like two or three inches, but that's it. Um, but yeah, it's just a little bit weird. Um, if, if I were to pull these ties in as tight as they can go and basically squeeze my waist in like real good, which I love doing, then this would look really strange the very bottom like it makes it really just like puff out and like stick out in a weird way so in order for the top to be a little bit more relaxed and because i took less of a bite out with my pleats um it, it makes the top look awkward if i pull it too tight so i just kind of make a gentle relaxed bow i just let it kind of come out a little bit and then it looks awesome so anyways nothing catastrophic but if you're gonna make it then maybe you should consider making it longer if you have even a normal size torso or a long torso i have a long torso so it's exaggerated for me but I have so many pairs of high-waisted pants, so I 
pretty much don't even care that it's short. I mean, I have so many things I can wear it with, so it doesn't bother me. <laughs> um, I think that's all I wanted to talk to you about. The other very, very important thing is that I will um, be running, or I guess Lamazi has nothing to do with me, will be running a coupon code for a couple of days. Um, while uh, right after this YouTube video comes out and my blog comes out. So I will put the code up here and I will tell you um, when it expires exactly so you know how long you have to use it. Um, but I'm really excited to be blogging for them. I have always loved their shop for so long. I love a lot of shops in the US too, but I love them because they have really good shipping options. Um, I get free shipping if I spend over 85 pounds, which they have a lot of like Atelier Burnett and like CU at six and really nice fabrics. <laughs> That's not hard to do. <laughs> um, so I uh, love that option and the fabric comes pretty quickly. And um, yeah, I just love browsing her website. She has such unique, beautiful fabrics. Um, and really high quality. So I was already loved that. I mean, I already loved them before she asked me to blog for her and it took me about two seconds to agree because I love telling you guys about people that I already like. I mean, I, I'm not going to, you know, how, I mean, I'll help out uh, small businesses as much as I can, but I'm not going to go over the top if I don't really love them and I really love Lamazi fabrics. So anyways, I hope you guys like this YouTube video. Basically everything I talked about is in my blog post. So if you want further explanation or you want pictures, I have a lot of those in there. Um, other than that, if I didn't talk about a step, um, it's because I just did whatever the instructions said. So putting the ties in were the same and all that kind of stuff. This fabric, once again, is so amazing. I love it so much. Um, I have a lot more interesting videos kind of coming up. If you guys um, want to subscribe, that would be awesome. I am interested in all sorts of things and I think I'm going to do more like photography videos, um, behind the scenes process of how I take my pictures, more fabric hauls maybe, um, and um, a couple of more garment constructions. I do have another one coming up. If you guys remember my Makes Challenge 5 videos, um, videos. I have one of the makes from there that it took me so long to get to, um, but I'm finally made it. So I have one of those coming up and that's it. So if you like this video, subscribe below, click the notification bell if you want to be notified when I have another video. Um, please leave me a comment or question below and I will answer any of your questions as best as I can or just say hi and I will definitely say hi back. Um, I hope you liked it and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye! Laundry, laundry.